Present. Admin. Present. Enquanta. Present. Ati. Present. Cousin. Present. Well, uh, Chunk Four is not here, so there, there, there will not be uh, an update from Ground Zero. Perhaps uh, there's an internet issue, Abakwa. Uh, and anytime he comes in, we can uh, feed him okay. from the program. Right. Uh, so we'll just go right into a discussion uh, regarding the, uh, the recent uh, gruesome killings and beheadings of women in southern Cameroon uh, by French Cameroon, by the French Cameroon army. Um, uh, this is obviously a, a very, very dastardly and uh, inhuman uh, acts of violence. Uh, Abakwa, um, uh, perhaps you can start with uh, your thoughts. Thank you, Uncle. Um, there, there's been an, uh, a video circulating of uh, a young uh, uh, woman in Muyoka and another uh, woman too that was savagely and uh, brutally uh, killed by beheading. The images actually numbed me when I saw it as a human. That should never be done to even, I cannot expect that to be done to my worst enemy. But to see young, uh, a, a, a young woman uh, who, uh, who's been murdered that way, it's just so cold. So then I really, uh, I am not very that old enough, but I, I, I went on soul searching as a young uh, person growing up in Southern Cameroon, that within the Southern Cameroon uh, state, I never read anything, nor did I ever heard anything uh, as gruesome and as savage beheading someone I happen to be uh, uh, fortunate that I grew up on both sides of Cameroon, and I happen I went over to the uh, to the French Cameroon in the late uh, '60s. That was when the War of Independence by those patriots that they were termed Makiza was still going on. I saw how um, the French. Uh, Cameroon army were uh, beheading civilians. I lived in Jombe, that's Jombe, Penja, uh, Lum, Mbanga. I actually went to school there and finished uh, primary school. So I would live through that era to see how uh, civilians were being beheaded as a tactic to intimidate and instill fear in the population. So when I really saw that, I said, no, this is not Amazonian spirit. This is not the standard by which we, the Southern Cameroonians, uh, uh, lived and were taught in our schools to be civil, to be moral, morally upright, and to respect human life and dignity. So that, uh, to me, just called that we should discuss that and let uh, our values shine and tell the whole world that whatever is happening on Amazonia is a continuous practice of French Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Abakwa. We want to get back to you, um, uh, but uh, one thing, or a couple of things. One, 
uh, just for those listeners who might be, be, be hearing about this, uh, when Abakwa talks about the French, this is juxtapositioned against the English. In other words, Cameroon has a, a French speaking uh, region, if you will, in an English speaking region, commonly referred to as the Francophone uh, and Anglophone regions, which is the, in essence, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, genesis of the, of the problem. Uh, I will hand over to Cousin, and then we'll make sure that we can allocate each other's uh, same 10 minutes uh, since we can, since we we have perspectives that are coming from all over the globe, uh, just to tell the our viewers and uh, listeners that uh, the spirit of uh, Southern Cameroon is that of friendly, the respect and dignity of human life, and that in our uh, more than fifty years of existence as a state, we nothing so gruesome. There has never been any uh, atrocity like beheading on our soil. And this happening today has the, the fingerprints and the uh, trademarks of uh, French La République because they have always done that uh, since uh, uh, the 50s and the war towards liberation. So I hand it over to Cousin now to, to, uh, to get us uh, uh, into the discussion. Yeah, um, once again, um, I think I thank everybody for being here. And I really, uh, it's a very, very somber day and it's been a very somber week uh, for me. Um, it's been very goring, very revolting uh, since, um, <clears throat> you know, the beginning of this week, seeing such um, gruesome images that one could only think about it coming from Ida Tata or so from Dante's Inferno. Um, you know, as I sat looking at that, the only thing, the book that came to my mind where I could quote from is uh, Charles Dickens' um, Tale of Two Cities. And, um, you know, where he says, you know, we, it was the bad, it was the best of time, it was the <clears throat> worst of time, um, the age of wisdom and the age of foolishness, the epoch of belief and the epoch of incredulity, the season of light and the season of darkness, the spring of hope and the winter of despair. Um, you know, these here are actually, Dan Wade was writing this book, uh, The Tale of Two Cities, to chronicle the events around the French Revolution. And um, if you think about it, um, we, they were fighting one tyrant in the puppet master's backyard. Here is, uh, here we fighting another tyrant, uh, many, many, many thousands of miles in Africa. And some of the same things that Darwin was mentioning uh, exactly, I mean, um, uh, Dickens was actually mentioning that actually occurring in, in, in our land. Um, so it's been really, really um, very frustrating for me uh, to see. Um, it's as, almost as if, as you watch this past week or two, it's almost as if um, the uh, <clears throat> protagonist there sometimes um, uh, engage in a competition conceived in Tartarus uh, for the most barbaric and undignified way of killing fellow humans and uh, dis desecrating uh, their bodies. Uh, first, as we, uh, I mean, as, uh, you know, Abakwa mentioned, it was the decapitation of a woman in the Northern Zone. And that particular woman was decapitated and purportedly by a, a young man and um, <clears throat> the things about that video that were so many, there were so many unanswered questions about that video. And number one, um, that young man apparently met the young lady and uh, in a bar and they danced for the first time. And the dancing was kind of very uh, seductive, um, almost akin to what we may call here lap dancing. Uh, but in, uh, with more um, close follow-up, it has also emerged that the person who actually filmed uh, him dancing with that yeah, young, or may filmed that young lady dancing um, uh, with him was actually a military uh, guy. And, um, and the question is that really a reasonable person then begins to ask is number one, um, why did this military guy 
uh, shoot these videos uh, with these uh, two uh, young people dancing, uh, whatever the, um, whatever, what was the motive? And how did this video actually get on the air without, you know, before this uh, lady got um, actually, um, uh, you know, grossly executed? So, and it's also now emerged that that young man now is now not only has been picked up by uh, La Republic, but that they are looking after, um, he, they're chasing his brother. And then, of course, the video in Moyoka, um, where uh, this, uh, some, uh, this uh, to some uh, a group of a uh, bunch of uh, young uh, men also tortured uh, this um, young lady and eventually ended up uh, decapitating her. Again, the same question, um, you know, some of those very similar questions are emerging because um, shortly after that, three young men uh, were picked up, you know, for allegedly committing uh, this barbaric, um, you know, act. But then, as it turns out, just before, even before they were picked up, these young three young men were picked up, there is somebody who actually has um, put his voice on another social media feed, claiming that he was responsible for committing this act. And so people are scratching their head and asking the question, what is actually um, going on? Who is behind this spate of, uh, the, the spate of uh, this kind of um, heinous uh, crimes? And why are some people being picked up when the people who actually some, in this case, in the case of the young lady in Boyoka, where somebody who actually claimed to have actually took, taken um, part in the execution of that young lady is actually roaming the street free. The third video was the, um, that was circulating on the social media this time around, you know, there is no ambiguity as to who was behind it, is a group of, um, you know, military guys who are uh, drag a young man who apparently has been injured and almost lifeless from the bush and they drag him a couple of meters away, just like a lion dragging a, a prey, I mean, his prey. Um, and then they drag him on the road, get to somewhere in the middle of the road, several miles away, um, at the request of another one of the uh, military guys, one of their colleagues picks up a gun and blow up this guy's brains. And then they still drag that lifeless corpse and they get to somewhere, they take him to a public square and put him there to send a message, you know, a deliberate message to the community. And that is like um, Abakwa was saying, if you look at all of this and you're asking yourself, what is really going on? And the, you then look at the, uh, the, 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 the history of La Republic, its modus operandi, um, you know, which is actually to uh, no fear as, uh, or repression as the only philosophy, as the only means, you know, to um, put down any uh, disagreement or to solve any disagreement, dating back into the late 50s uh, when they went after the UPC, which was the first actually independent, um, pro-independent fighting uh, force in, in, in Africa. And that was led by a, a general who just also, you know, died, uh, General Semenge. And I'm not sure that the, the, the idiot when he was doing, committing these acts of violence in those days, knew that he was also going to face his, um, his maker. And at the time they would, you know, kill people, decapitate them and put their heights on, on their heads on the pike and put them strategically yeah. on, market, on the market, on the public square, just to tell the people. So it is actually uh, quite problematic that uh, these mm -hmm. things are happening in our land. And I say, you know, La Republic is actually joining and uh, jumping around to tell us mm -hmm. that they want to seek justice or they want to um, uh, give us, I mean, they want to um, uh, find the culprits. And I say, no, the any, any purported outcry or expression of righteous indignation on the part of our public is hypocrisy at its worst, but it is intentionally decept uh, um, uh, a deceptive tactics to divert the attention of the international community, and then put yeah, blame. propaganda. Yes, and put blame on 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 on, on us. And the you know remember that these people who are actually now telling us, kind of like perversely preaching justice or peace and stuff, you know. 12,000 or more of our comrades have died from a senseless war that actually started on as a, 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 a protest by 
the young folks who were asking nothing but reforms, governmental reforms, judicial reforms, education reform. Remember, this is the same uh, regime that has now, um, you know, that has burned over uh, 300 villages, killing everything from animals to humans, including the first victim who was Mami Api, an 80-year-old lady, you know, whose, victim, whose remains were charred, um, almost like charcoal. And it is the same regime that whose um, uh, military actually shot Baby Mata, a four-year-old, with eight bullets, a widow her little boy with eight bullets, you know, intentionally. Um, it is the same regime that, you know, almost like uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, actually did not have the, the morality to allow part of them to be in prison for several uh, for, for, for a year without, without being charged. They chained him to his bed while the guy died um, in, in jail, uh, chained to his bed. So a, a regime that has committed pogrom, committed genocide and um, infanticide, and of course, who forgets about the Ngapu massacre? In our culture, nobody kills a pregnant animal, not even to talk about a pregnant woman. But in Ngapu, on the Valentine Day, that is exactly what happened, actually by La Republic, not by accident, intentional, to instill fear. So when you see all of this, you kind of like would say yes. This is why I quoted, I made this quote from, I, I mean, I read this quote from Charles Darwin, I mean, from Charles Dickens, because many of us are very, very hopeful to usher in freedom. But we're also seeing with, with, with you know, with, with, um, with, with disdain, these kind of heinous crimes that are being committed on our land. I would say it is very unclear at this point who is behind this, but definitely a regime that has done all the things, all the terrible things that the Republic has done, is capable of, um, you know, rise, I mean, uh, um, engineering a fifth column that actually, unfortunately, does work with some of Amazonians who are, you know, either working with them as useless idiots, as, um, um, as, as, as useless fools, as we'll say, it, as, as sociologists will put it, for those Amazonians who actually may be working with La Republic, either as useful idiots, as I said, or intentionally, know that there will be a day of reckoning. You are not doing this in the name of Amazonia. The majority, overwhelming majority of Amazonians are freedom fighters. They mm -hmm. are, love their lives and they love peace. They just don't love graveyard peace. They just don't love the law of the jungle, even though they love law and order. We would fight, we would get to the promised land but anybody who is committing, using that as, a, as, as an avenue to commit crimes because you have a gun in your hand, know that there will be a day of reckoning. Know that one day justice will be sought for these young ladies as it is for all the other civilians that have been killed through in, in this war. And for those people who may actually, some of whom may unfortunately be in the diaspora, you know, who are calling young men, who call young men, and rather than preach the right message, which is, Go after, you know, you, you can go after the enemy, but leave the civilians alone. If you do this, you yourself, one day, we, you, you'll be called to account to, 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 to justice. But let nobody be in any doubt where the overwhelming blame here lies. If La Republic pulled out their military out of our land, tomorrow we will be able to get back, you know, to, to get orders in our land. We will be able to get you know, justice in our land, and we should be able to get to normalcy. After all, like, uh, the culture of, um, of, of Ambazonia has been one of peace, it has been one of law and order, it has been one of love. Okay. Yeah, um, I just wanted to add that for the last um, gruesome incident which um, Cousin was talking about, what is important to note here is that um, these individuals that carried out this, this heinous act were in their full military um, fatigue. Yes. There's no argument there. Unlike the other ones where it was um, um, plain clothes people, uh, persons, where there can be ambiguity. In the last one, where somebody was sh dragged and shot um, in, before the public, these were people in, in, in La Republic, uh, military fatigue and insignia and everything, and they didn't even try to hide their faces. They're not wearing masks or anything. And several of them. That's all I just wanted to add. Thank you, Enqueta. Uh, Can I say it? one thing? <clears throat> yes, go ahead. Uh, um, when this first happened, I, 
I have Google News come up. And because, uh, you know, I'm always looking. And it was reported that in the very, very beginning, it was Amber Boys that did this. And that was over, I'm pretty sure, Google News. And I went, what? And I, I kind of read it, but it was just like at the very beginning. Um, but it was reported that way. That was before any of the, the videos came out. It was just like at the very beginning. How many people saw that over Google? When we have, when we have uh, murders like this, and, and, and now I'm talking about beheadings, other different types of, uh, you say, vicious, and, 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 it, and, it, and it still seems understated in terms of the actions in this crime. What is the worldwide protocol, okay, that, that happens when there is a crime of, of this sort? When, when, when you have a, 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 in Africa or any place else in the world, uh, this type of uh, action, it would seem to me that there is important world protocol that should go into place some certain division, some things, so on and so forth. And I, I wonder if that action is being taken. Um, uh, uh, Admin, are you ready to, um, to uh, 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 speak? And then we'll go to Tange. Well, thank you. I think much has been said already uh, on this case. But uh, I would just want to add uh, just some few historical facts on, on this. And the first thing I want to say is that from history, uh, we should not expect much uh, facts finding from Cameroon. That we should, we should know already. And uh, the reason is that these actions are being perpetrated by Cameroon military and the government is fully aware of that. So you will, they re, we will get the same results as, <laughs> as what we have been having for the past 56 years. Cameroon government has never investigated any action carried out by its military. Apart from the Gabu incident, that actually there was international pressure that uh, forced them to actually uh, come out. But for this one, it, it is clear that it was carried out by Cameroon military. So we shouldn't expect much from them. Now, getting back to Ambazonia, you see, as Cameroon is trying to portray that we are the perpetrators, I will say that it's right. wrong because from historical background, it is good to understand who are Ambazonians. I, I am aware that most Ambazonians don't even know themselves. They don't usually ask who are they, where do they come from, and where are they heading to? And until Ambazonians themselves start by understanding this, then will they be able to challenge such, such uh, incidents that take place on ground zero? Because they do not reflect Ambazonia spirit. Ambazonians don't have the spirit of uh, conquering other people because Ambazonia was never conquered. Ambazonia came into existence by peace, by acceptance, which means when even the first missionaries came, they did not conquer Ambazonia. They negotiated with Ambazonia, dialogued with them. They dialogued with the people and they agreed and gave a place for the first missionaries to build the first church in Black Africa. It was built in Ambazonia. And that was carried out. You know, God works in a mysterious way. You see, God brought in this, a son of that part of the world. A son that was taken through slave trade, carried far away to the Jamaican islands. God brought him back to his motherland. 
to allow him now educate his own people about him God what God wants the purpose of God and the purpose of Christ and Joseph Merrick was that person he was the first missionary that came to black Africa with the word of God and when he came he did not conquer the people he negotiated with the villagers with the chiefs so it was an agreement so from there the people entered and uh, they entered they took an oath with God and Bazonia by then called Bimbia carried the whole Gulf of Guinea up, uh, the Gulf of Guinea up to where we have uh, Victoria you know so the people there, after entering this contract with God, started fighting slave trade. Because we should remember that Bimbia was the center of slave trade in Black Africa. It was the center because it was the highest center because of uh, navigation facilities. When we look at the Gulf of Guinea, you'll find around the Bimbia area coming down up to Victoria, that's where you find the deepest seaport in the whole of that west up in the whole of that Gulf of Guinea, where the biggest ship of any size can anchor. So it became the center. And when this the 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 the, 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 the citizens accepted the missionaries, gave them a place to build even the first church. So they were molded in that spirit of consciousness, spirit of working together, spirit of consulting others, spirit of listening to others. And that helped them to now form teams to fight against slave trade. And, that, and this history is part of the history that Cameroon has hidden. And when you even come to Bimbia, you go to Victoria area now, they have even allowed that slave village, it's actually a village that is existing, they have allowed that slave village to become a forest so that this history should be hidden, so that people should not know that Bimbia existed even the, before the German Cameroon, uh, even before the Republic of Cameroon. So that history is hidden completely. I have just sent out a video to, to our forum where you guys, you can watch, uh, you can watch uh, uh, the slave village. There was a documentary that just that passed. Somebody took pains to go in there to get that. So that spirit of killing is not among Amazonians. No, it is not. And that contract with God existed and it has continued. Even after Joseph Merrick left, Afreseka came. We should remember that Afreseka is not the first missionary because that is what Cameroon is projecting. So no, Afreseka, Afreseka is the first missionary. Afre no, that is wrong. Afreseka merely came to replace Joseph Merrick in, in 1844 when he was feeble, sick. So he could not make it. So that was when now there was a decision in London by the Baptist uh, mission that they should, Afriseka should come and replace him. So that was when Afriseka came. And not until 1845 that he now crossed, Afriseka started moving towards the Mongo. Crossed the Mongo, went to Bonaberry, to the Francophone side where he established a church. So the church that he established there was not the first church as portrayed by Cameroon. So oh, the first church was established by Afriseka in Cameroon and so on. No, it's wrong. It's because they don't want this background history to be, to, to, to be known by the world. But you can do research yourself and you'll find out those things. So when we see incidents like this coming up, we should be questioning ourselves. We should be the ones to teach the world to tell them, look, we are not this way. And that is why when the Germans came in, the Germans, when they came in, I and mean, when the British came in, we did not fight them. We did not conquer them, or they did not even, they did not conquer us. But they, they were, they, they, the British were, were, were wise in the sense that they kept in behind those missionaries. And our people, 
believing in those missionaries and after taking this oath with God, allowed now this, the, 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 the British administration to establish and created the, what they call the, Victor, the, the British colony of Victoria, which be, uh, and, um, and then transformed Bimbia to be the first, to, I mean, to be a British colony. So we have been people of peace all along. And when you see, even when we joined Cameroon, the way our people were being maltreated, we never fought them. From 19, if you look from 1961, we, we, we started associating with them. They have been killing our people. The only time that our people now were touched was in, in, uh, in 2017, where Cameroon went to the extreme and said, oh, these are animals. We are going to crush them down. And they, have, they said it clearly. They, their president said, I will use three months and finish them. They kept in with their military. And most people used to, uh, most people used to doubt that, but why is it that, how, how possible that these people who were divided just became united? No, the spirit of God was behind us. It's just like in the days of Israel. When they woke up, the people stood as one. Although they were divided, there were 12 tribes, and each tribe, they had some inter-conflict. This is how Ambazonia, you know, with this spirit of God behind us and our way of living peacefully in accordance to the old we had with God, it was still there. Although we, this younger generation did not see it, God never failed in his promise. The promise of God was there. When we, our ancestors entered that oath with God, God has kept it. From that day, we became a chosen nation. And that's why this, this, this struggle is called God ordained. Most people don't say, they just say God ordained. They don't know why. It's because of that old our people took with God when the first missionary came. Our people agreed to do the will of God. And the will of God is what our people have been doing. We are the first country in Africa to receive refugees. We accepted refugees from French Cameroon when they were, they were being killed and termed as Makizat. We accepted refugees in, in Nigeria the beer France. And we have been working this way. And if you go back from, if you go deep into South Cameroon history, we have been, we, we, we have been those that have encouraged Cameroon government to even give aid. We were giving aid to China, North Korea. So we have been peaceful people. We, 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 we have never engaged in any such sin. Of, of what we are seeing today, La République du Cameroon annexing Ambazonia. So La République du Cameroon is actually the ones that introduced first corruption in our political system. They brought in tribalism. They brought in nepotism. They abolished our, our, our civics. You know, in those days we had civics where in, in, in when stu uh, students were being taught civic, it was to, to increase their, their morals, to take their country first, and to take care of each other. This is what we had in our educational system. So when the French came in, they saw that if they don't destroy this, then the people will always remain united and they will work against them. I will join everyone who calls for peace to say that we Ambazonia are peaceful people. We don't engage in such things. And the eye, all eyes should turn to La Republic du Cameroon because that is what they are. Thank you. Yeah, uh, just to add to what uh, colleagues have said, uh, the videos were really, really heart wrenching. And what can we say other than extend our heartfelt sympathy to uh, the families, you know? of the ladies killed in such a gruesome manner. I must say that um, <clears throat> we're in a war situation. And uh, in war situation, in war situations, uh, what comes up alongside whatever is going on is propaganda. Okay. And we got to be really careful and examine the issues as they are presented. We have the freedom fighters from Ambazonia 
you know, the terming them terrorists and all that. But in reality, they are freedom fighters. And there are two types. They are the real freedom fighters, and then they are the rogue freedom fighters, those who are, uh, they've had splinter groups uh, sponsored by uh, the government. You know, you have groups under uh -huh. Atanganji and other government officials. Reports from the Gambu massacre talks of the influence of one of those vigilante groups that are working hand in hand with, uh, with the government, with the, with, the, with the military forces of the government. So we should look at this really, really critically. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to say that when I watched the video and listened closely to the language, you know, for those who grew up in Cameroon, you can tell when somebody is speaking and you can pick from the language if that person is English speaking or French speaking. When they're speaking in a, you know, not in a broken language, in, in pidgin, you can tell. And you can even tell from the mannerisms. I had to get this video and to send to a friend who's able to do this analysis and he's still yet to go through details of that to tell us what he thinks about the video. But my humble opinion is that all of that, while the acts are really, really gruesome, those behind the act is what we should look at. Guys being manipulated, being intimidated to do that. Because the La, La Republic's modus operandi is you intimidate, you brutalize, you kill, and you kill in such manner that you instill fear and you, 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 know, you, you, you get people to, 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 to follow what you want to do, whether they like it or not, because they are all, they're all being cowed into this uh, mm -hmm. obedience. Exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, you know, previous speakers have talked about the peaceful nature of Amazonians. That is true. I went to a bilingual school where as kids were mixed with Francophones and we could tell, they could tell we're all different. Right up to these days when we are all adults and professionals in our own life, they keep looking and like, oh, you guys. In fact, some of them through that school even switch to the English system of education. Anyway, those in the sciences don't have a choice because you know, to make progress in science, you need to work in English. But look at what happened in the history of this war. This, this liberation struggle. Sam Suya was killed this same gruesome manner by the French military. French military that, you know, in Bafut, when they came and attacked, this same manner, that's how they killed them. In Mankon, they killed people this same manner, you know, some, they slaughtered their, 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 their throats. They slaughtered animals just to decimate whatever the people had. And of course, the videos have been going around. Uh, there's one popular, they call the MKDP, whatever, that is part of their propaganda missionary, somebody from within who is doing all that. <laughs> so, and it is not strange because beheading, beheading people, and that is, that is really dehumanizing people to the, last, to the last degree. You behead and you desecrate, you know, bodies. Really that is what they do. And it is not, if you look at history, French history, because that's the French, that's the French modus operandi. That's what they did in Senegal. With African soldiers who fought for France came back and they were asking for their due. They killed them in that same manner. In Guinea, in Guinea, same thing. In Cameroon, which we talked about, UPC. UPC, before they even, they were killing them. And I mean, I still remember vivid pictures that came out were so scared of heads on sticks, lining the villages, lining the roads. Even when going to school, I still have, you know, phobia going through Lum. There's a patch Lum Kumba. He said, this is Makisa territory. Mm -hmm. But those are freedom fighters. So let's look back into our history and see the, the, the Amazonians. <clears throat> is that how they fight? Is that how, is, are they a violent people? These are peaceful people. 
under this thing that's going on for the last 60 years, had they taken out arms? No. The military came in, and all they were doing was self-defense is a right anyway. This is this a ragtag army. The La Republic Army, they train in warfare. They know the rules of engagement in warfare, and yet they do that. Uh, with this, uh, us is a ragtag army that's still do, just doing their defense. So my take is, while those acts are condemnable and they need to investigate to the full extent to see who are behind it, but they are all pointers that the Republic is behind it. They have their own soldiers there and those other little guys with all this stuff. So the truth will come out. La Republic never accepts anything. Even Gabu, they refuse. And <clears throat> thank God for technology. Because the killing of those, uh, the, the, the mother and the children, babies in the north, they refuse, they refuse. But it's like, you know, let me use the local parlance, you know, you eat uh, 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 arrow with your hands and oil. There's oil on your hands and you're holding your hands and like, no, I didn't do this but everybody sees oil in your hands. So sooner or later, the truth will emerge because all they do is, after having committed this heinous act, they're trying to pin it on, 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 on Southern Cameroonians and use it as part of their propaganda to say, this is what these people are doing to their people. <laughs> the underlying cause is there. Let's get back to the underlying cause. Why are we here? How did we get here? I think when we look at all those things, we begin to understand because desperate time calls for really desperate measures. And these are desperate measures that they are using now to give a dog a bad name to hang it. But unfortunately, uh, this fight that they thought was going to be, uh, they're going to crush them and do all what, it's not happening as they thought. Because this is, frankly, this, this, this fight, this fight for the liberation of Amazonia is a fight for the soul of that whole entity. We don't care about them, but once we move, and this is the fear, once Southern Cameroon leaves, that will be the end of what they call La Republic Cameroon. It's going to, the balkanization process has begun, and it's all hostage taking. It's not us asking for this. This group is asking for that, but let's wait and see. So. It is all part of the propaganda. And my wish is, and my hope and prayer is that the, uh, the freedom fighters, the leaders of the freedom fighters would caution their fighters and walk and instill more discipline and avoid those rogue elements. Avoid those rogue elements from, you know, really getting, getting to do things that will tarnish the image of what the freedom fight is all about. Thank you. Um, uh, go ahead, Abafa. Uh, Uncle, um, I mean, you know, when people write your history, they would define you the way uh, they want you to appear. When you write your history, you speak from experience. The voices that you are hearing are spread from all over the world. These are, we are Ambazonian, talking about our own history writing about our own history. And if you just oppose this to what you know from us, you know us from La Republic, you will get a different picture. And uh, I have learned a lot from listening to our August panel. And I would equally say that uh, the French history taught me that the people who started the guillotine who started beheading exactly. uh, the French. And if you learn, if you have heard something about the reign of terror, the reign of terror started in France. And that mm -hmm. practice that is embedded in them, they took it all over their colonies in Africa. Yep. Never, never in Africa was, the, uh, was the, uh, the most vicious war of independence than what, that, than what happened in Algeria. Exactly. This is an indication that whatever happens in uh, this week and what has been happening uh, in uh, Ambazonia are the fingerprints of 
what French army have actually learned from their masters. Right. So there is no indication whether they are uh, some rogue Ambazonians who did it. They are rogue Ambazonians that grew up in the French system and that since they started that they were going to dissolve those cubes of sugar, they were planting this devilish spirit, erasing our own identity and humanity. As you said, we were connected and we came from a peaceful uh, beginning, humble beginning, respecting everybody. If it were not who we were and who we are today, we would not have left Nigeria peacefully and came and settled there peacefully. And we, in those days, we opened our borders to receive our brothers on the east side of the Mongo and gave them refuge. Because if you look at the images, you would see that our brothers on, on the eastern side of the Mongo, the Frenchmen came there, they were behaving, and you see them holding civilians' heads in their hands as a sign of terror. La Republic has a lot to gain by publicizing that it is Ambazonia. If you can stand and ask yourself a question, Ambazonia is getting world sympathy now. Would you really think that Ambazonian fighters and Ambazonian freedom fighters would really risk at this point that they are saying uh, the, the victory line to do uh, things this atrocious, anyone who does not really see that just be blind. Exactly. I'm happy for, for everyone that has spoken before me. I only want to add um, the things that I, I, I think that have not um, um, been committed or commented upon. And for me, if you if you're listening to the um, conversations on social media of the two camps, so to speak, Ambazonia and um, La Republic, there's one camp that is consistently calling for international fact-finding mission to get to the root of the atrocities. And if Ambazonia was were the ones who were the um, the perpetrators of this, they would not be calling for it. La Republic has insisted that they want to investigate. Um, these atrocities. The Ambazonia is calling for independent international fact-finding um, um, experts to come and investigate. Just looking at those two positions, I think it is clear. Um, who is yeah. I'd I like to simply simply um, amplify and make a couple of comments on that and have a request. You know, I, I think when it comes to these types of crimes, I, I, I'm, I'd be very surprised if there was not in existence a sort of international protocol. So when there is a beheading or when there would be a, a mass rape of some type or some hideous crime on the outer edges of, you know, I don't even know how to qualify that. I, I think there, 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 there must be certain authorities that are, are charged with, with uh, uh, investigating that. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't it matter what the Cameroon government says or what Southern Cameroonians say or, or whatever. When something like that happens, I, I think there must be, I, I'm not sure. And I'm hoping, I wanted to ask Auntie if she could look into exactly that and give us a report next week if she finds anything. The second thing that I'd like to say that we've alluded to, and, I, and I'd, like to, I'd like to put a sort of a, an African-American light on it. Um, growing up in America, from time to time, we would hear about mass murder. And growing up, you would have a, a Martin Luther King who were doing positive things and other people that are doing positive things. And all of a sudden, you'd hear about a mass murder. And the first thing that would come into your mind as a child or those, you know, those parents or adults or whatever, well, I hope it wasn't a black person. And of course, up until 
maybe the 70s or 80s, you never heard about a mass murderer being a black person. So mm -hmm. for 400 years, from the 1600s on up to 1970 or 80, okay, you never, you, that, that wasn't the case. If there was a mass murder, you were looking for a white male. And, and I'm, just, I'm just providing that story as a, as a, as a sort of a, uh, uh, another umbrella to look at what we've been talking about in terms of the guillotine and um, uh, uh, the, the genesis of that uh, to, to today's world. I suggest that we, we really look at, I, I, I'm hoping that, that Auntie would, ex, would accept uh, uh, my request is to, to just look into what, what those entities are or who those people are. And I would suggest that they're actually are probably already working. And they do, they do marvelous work. They have marvelous, very ingenious ways of getting intelligence and getting facts uh, on the ground. And one has to understand that when you are a government who um, does not take care of your people, these types of splinter groups and other things and so on and so forth can have this actual impact. It is the same thing that is being talked about in today's news programs here when we start to consider people going out in the street with their guns and marching and so on and so forth and the whole Q movement and all these, it's the same thing. No one that we know of is being beheaded right now, but it's actually the same potential problem that I'm sure the FBI and Justice Department and others are investigating right now. They know that when these protests go on, that there are agitators that are going in and starting. They know that already. Auntie, do you think that that's something that you could do for us? I think I'll look it up. But um, <clears throat> as somebody pointed out, it usually happens that these names are brought forward after the war is over like the Nuremberg yeah, trials. Yeah, we're not trying to find the names. We're, we're <clears throat> simply trying to understand who it is. Uncle, who I know. Okay. Uncle, I problem, the biggest problem that you're going to have, there are two big problems. Number one is you can only investigate if you have access into that place. And many times right. when these people get into the point where <clears throat> it's actually leading directly into the, into the seat of power, what they're going to tell you is that they cannot vouch for your um, for your safety, and then and so on, and, and by using that particular tactic, they prevent these people from getting in directly uh, from, from getting the access. Number two, and this is sometimes what I was mm -hmm. actually alluding to. Two is that <clears throat> sometimes even when you are very close, when you are perilously close, what they do is that they sacrifice one pawn on the on the chess on the chess piece. We saw this with the with the gruesome massacre of um, of uh, some. Um, women and kids in who were summarily executed shot from the back by uh, this uh, part of this Gestapo in the Republic up in the north. So I think that one we should understand here, which we're saying is, yes, it is very, very possible. And I think it's very possible that the people who might have executed these young women may actually have been born in Abazonia. They may actually be Amazonians. Yes, they, that is very, very true. But where did the instructions come from? Who actually was right. behind them? That's right. Exactly. That means Which side are they on? And just again to, to, to sort of explain what, what I'm looking for, when we look at the United Nations, um, I suspect that there is a team that deals with genocide. I, 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 I suspect that there's a team that deals with genocide in Europe. Uh, uh, another team that deals with it if it's in Japan or whatever. I suspect that there's a team that deals with beheading. Okay, uh, I suspect that uh, there's a team that deals with beheading if it's in the way. 
there's a different team that deals with it if it's uh, in Eastern Africa or Western Africa, some, something like that. Who are those individuals that make up that team? A perfect example of understanding that in terms of one's outreach is the, is the, the uh, response of Representative Bass. It is a response, while it be weak, it is a response. And, and it takes while for them to, to, to go out and get information just as it takes us, even though she has a staff, et cetera. But she says, while, it, while, while the video has not been verified, okay, it highlights the ongoing insecurity. She does not say, in this what the actual video is it's a beheading okay so she knows that this is wrong and 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 who who are these people that have to come up with these various reports they're charged with doing this any All final right. thoughts well, the, I think that we had a very, very productive uh, discussion. And uh, uh, we've done our job. We just hope what uh, uh, the people out there, those who did not know about what, uh, is our, what we are, who we are, and those who had a false history, they have heard from us. Talk about our own history. Define who we are from our experience. And you can just uh, uh, put these stories uh, alongside what you already know or what you know from La Republic, and you will be able to make up your minds. That's why we get this discussion, so that we present different views, because we believe in... Uh, that for every coin, there are two sides of it, and that our way of doing things is not imposing, but to bring, to discuss ideas. We don't discuss people. We present it to you, and then you make your own uh, educated judgment. To me, um, I would say the, yes, um, it's really, uh, you know, important that we take time and have these conversations and continue to have these conversations. Um, our thoughts and prayers go to the uh, victims, uh, to the bereaved, uh, to the people who have lost uh, loved ones, um, especially from this very gruesome act. But I think the, one of the things that um, we hear, a lesson that uh, we, especially those of us here in, uh, in the U.S. can learn from, uh, would be when you hear people who don't want to do anything about uh, solving the injustice, pro uh, the social injustice prob problem in, in the United States, the point to black on black crimes, right? And then you ask yourself, why are you, because they raise this issue, not because they want to solve it, but it's just to say, yeah, you guys are terrible. And it doesn't really even matter what we do. You people are not up to, you know, human beings anyway. And that's what they tell us in very coded language. We're seeing the same thing. This is something that oppressors use, uh, people in privileged position use. And we're seeing the same thing in Ambazonia, where it may be, again, as I say, that who caused this, who committed this act of this hideous crime, I mean, these hideous crimes may not yet be known, but the direct pointer goes back to uh, Yaoundé. And I say that I just urge that every one of us that has a ear of any politicians here, any person in position of power should be asking for us, for, uh, should be asking for one thing. How can we get a fact-finding mission on the ground? This is what we want to know. That's, that's a key thing that we really should be asking um, if we can be able to do anything to assuage the situation and stop these senseless murders. It would be the one single thing that we can do um, at any level. And 
um, for those people who can, we can also write, you know, to those international organizations and say, hey, yes, get back and find out what is happening here. And I think that is probably one, one area where we can agree that, you know, contacting some of those organizations may be just to say, yes, we want to know the facts. But um, overall, it's been a, it's such a, an emotional torture for those of us that really are into this for freedom, uh, for fighting for freedom. And um, I hope that we would continue to uh, uh, work on this. And um, maybe even next week, probably if we have more information, we'll update ourselves and, and go from there. Great, well, well, thank you everyone. And with that, the uh, meeting uh, for today is adjourned. Oh, my God.